I was obsessed with this idea of building a love story with equality and it got even more radical in the process. I mean, the whole movie is about equality and about how um, when you look at somebody, they're also always looking at you. So this whole process of reinventing the muse figure and saying that there is no muse, there's only collaborators and women inspiring in a mutual way, um, that was also the perspective. The tension around the gays is actually the plot of the film, so you could even see it as a manifesto around female gays. As I was doing my research to write the script, I came across a large amount of video essays that touched on the subject of what I wanted to talk about. And I didn't want to make just another video on topics covered so very eloquently by other creators. Broey Deschanel has already made a great one on the male gaze and Lessons from the Screenplay has already analysed one of the scenes I'm going to be talking about, so go and check those out. But as I was saying, while researching, I came across a TIFF talk from Joey Soloway, a non-binary, two-time Emmy Award winning television creator, showrunner, director, writer and activist. In it, they talk about the female gaze not as a literal opposition to the male gaze, but rather a completely different filmic framework. The male gaze shot is like tits, bikini, bar, pina colada, pina colada. It's the waitress's tits. She walks, 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 walks to the table. She sets down the pina coladas and the scene begins. Okay, I know what you guys are thinking. Are you thinking, Jill, is the female gaze simply the opposite of the male gaze? Great question. And the talk is especially relevant to the film I want to talk about today, one of my favorites. Portrait de la jeune fille en feu, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, by Céline Siama. In her landmark 1975 essay, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, Laura Mulvey argues that in mainstream film, audiences are forced to view women from a heterosexual, cis male perspective. The audience is assumed to be a reflection of patriarchal society. The filmic language, the type of compositions and editing, for example, contributes to using women in the film as erotic objects, things that the masculine characters look at in order to get pleasure. By identifying the males as active and the females as passive, men have the unrivaled power to direct their gaze creating a power imbalance in which women can do nothing but receive the look. But in their TIFF talk, Soloway offers a counter to the male gaze in the form of the female gaze, not as a literal direct opposition with just a gender role inversion of who is being looked at and who is doing the looking. If it were the opposite of the male gaze, if taken literally, it would mean, I'm just gonna redo that sentence that Laura Mulvey said, visual arts and literature depicting the world and men from a feminine point of view presenting men as objects of female pleasure that would be as if like magic mike was written by stephanie soderberg soloway goes on to divide the theory in three parts the first i think the female gaze might be a way of feeling seeing the camera can be thought of as subjective attempting to get inside the character, especially when they are not a cis male. The frame being used as a way of being in the feelings of the character, rather than just looking at them. Soloway goes on to explain how they direct their camera operators. And I have my particular methods. Our cinematographer, Jim Frona, when he's holding the camera, his body isn't feeling. He's not capturing but he's actually playing an action like the actors and whispering in his ear while he's shooting between takes. He's playing the action of melting or oozing or allowing. He's feeling something in his body that we have chosen together while he's holding the camera. Part two. Is that the female gaze takes on the task of how it feels to be the object of the gaze. The camera is showing you how it feels to be seen, looked at, even objectified. It's what they call the gazed gaze. The third is that the female gaze is also able to communicate 
that the person being looked at acknowledges their role in the gaze. And it's about how it feels to stand here in this world having been seen our entire lives. Or a line I heard yesterday in a web video, we don't write culture, we're written by it. It says, we see you seeing us, and it says, I don't want to be the object any longer. I see you seeing me, and I don't want to be the object any longer. The reason why Soloway's talk is so fascinating to me is because of how well it fits with the central themes and style of Portrait of a Lady on Fire. The film is set in the late 18th century in rural France. Marianne is called out to an island to paint a portrait of Eloise, commissioned by her future husband. The gaze is represented explicitly in various different ways here. Marianne spends enormous amounts of time looking at Eloise so she can memorize her face. The future husband wants a painting of Eloise so he can look at her and objectify her, even if she's not around. And Eloise spends long amounts of time looking back at Marianne as she sits for her. The three points Soloway makes in their TIFF talk are represented fantastically in a scene at around the film's midpoint. And I know this scene has been analyzed to death, but seriously, it's because it's so good. And not to go off on tangent, but Siama is absolutely masterful here. She crafts this back and forth with such thoughtfulness and effort that it feels like an instant classic when you see it. The camera work is subtle, and deliberately non-objectifying, never getting in the way of the performance or the textual meaning. It is truly at the service of what the characters are feeling. Now that would be Soloway's first point. The second point is that Eloise and Marianne directly express their feelings about looking and being looked at. You know everything. Pardon me, I don't want to be at your place. Mais nous sommes à la même place. Exactement à la même place. Venez ici. Venez. In the absence of the male gaze, they can openly talk about what they perceive of each other in a non-sexual way, seeing themselves in a non-objectifying fashion, truly understanding their feelings and being able, because of that, to connect on a deeper, non-superficial level. It is what Soloway calls the gazed gaze. Being aware and acknowledging your role in the looking game. But what Siama does fantastically is put both women on equal terms. Because they both spend time looking at each other. They both have power and agency. They are both the object and the subject at the same time. In Soloway's third point, they say, I see you seeing me. Eloise's unwillingness to sit for paintings has its roots in knowing that she is being doubly objectified, once by whoever is painting her and once by he who receives the painting. That's why her reluctancy to pose begins to wane when she finally meets someone who sees her truly, devoid of objectification. Because they are on equal terms, they understand each other. I believe that is what sets up the love story to come. I believe Portrait of a Lady on Fire can serve as a kind of model for a new way of understanding romantic cinema, devoid of meaningless objectification, Stiama crafts a space for everyone in this film and in conceiving it through the lens of the female gaze is able to provide a viewpoint that is much more comfortable to a wider audience than purely masculine narratives. Now the first time I saw this film, days before the pandemic shut down the whole world, I was swept away. I felt I could live perfectly through the character's desire for each other because it never made me feel uncomfortable identifying with a viewpoint. 
I was weeping to myself during the last four minutes or so. So I definitely would recommend watching it if you haven't. It's one of my favorites for a reason. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. I know it's been a while since the last one, but I've recently moved to Barcelona and only just started to get back up to date on the videos I want to make for you people. So thanks for liking, and I just wanted to say hello and thank you to all the new subscribers. See you in the next one. Peace.